Exam Scholar, Real Estate Edition. Question 1. Which lien has the lowest priority for collection? A. Special Assessments. B. Property Taxes. C. Mortgages. D. Unsecured Court Order. Answer. D. An unsecured court order would have the lowest priority of the listed answers. Property taxes, special assessments, and mortgages generally have priority. Question 2. In a case in which the seller refuses to pay the broker a commission and the broker does not sue the seller, what can a sales agent do to receive the commission due to him slash her? A. Sue the seller. B. Sue the broker. C. Place a lien on the property. D. Sue for specific performance. Answer. B. The only real recourse that a sales agent would have in this situation is to sue the broker for the commission. Only a broker can sue the seller slash principal. Question 3. If Mike, an attorney, sends Misha, the sales agent, a crisp $100 bill in an envelope to her office in return for referring her client to him, under the rules of RESPA this would be. A. Legal. B. Illegal. C. Shady business practices because the money should not be cash. D. None of these. Answer. B. Under the rules of RESPA, this type of action would be illegal because it is considered a kickback. Question 4. RESPA does not regulate. A. Booklets. B. That lenders make a good faith estimate of closing costs. C. Rates. D. That the HUD-1 uniform settlement statement be used. Answer. C. RESPA does not include anything about rates. Question 5. Even if a person has a low credit worthiness, the fair housing law requires A. That the lender make the loan anyway at a higher interest rate. B. That the lender make a good faith attempt to obtain a loan. C. That the lender reconfigure the loan requirements to fit the individual. D. None of these. Answer. B. The fair housing law does not require that a lender perform any of these actions if the individual does not meet the required creditworthiness. Question 6. The seller delivers the deed to the property and the buyer pays the purchase price in the step known as A. Ending B. Closing C. Final D. Deadline Answer. B. The transfer of title and settlement of accounts is called the closing. Question 7. Depreciated value is considered in which approach? A. Cost. B. Sales comparison. C. Income. D. Gross rent multiplier. Answer. A. The cost approach considers depreciated value, which is estimated. Question 8. James was able to have his building permit issued without issue even though there was this violated restriction. A. Deed. B. Zoning. C. Building code. D. Setback. Answer. A. A deed restriction is not enforced by local building authorities and are non-governmental. They are issued by the previous owner of the property and can be enforced through neighbor's lawsuits. Question 9. If a real estate agency relationship is to be enforceable, which of these needs to happen? A. Be authorized by a written agreement. B. The agent must be a valid licensee. C. The principal must have the power to do what is being assigned. D. All of these. 
Answer. D. In order for the real estate agency relationship to be enforceable, all of these criteria must be met, and in some cases more than these. Question 10. If a homeowner wishes to receive monthly checks or a lump sum based on the equity in their home that does not have to be paid back until either the property is sold or the owner dies, they would need to obtain a a circular mortgage b comprehensive mortgage c reverse mortgage d applied reverse mortgage answer c this type of tapping of equity in a home is called a reverse mortgage. Question 1. Many real estate contracts are in writing on forms. Parts of these contracts are written and parts are printed. In the interpretation of such contracts. A. Printed parts take preference over the written parts. B. The written parts and the printed parts are given equal consideration. C. The written parts take preference over the printed parts. D. Any parts copied from the form take preference over those that are purely original. Answer. C. As regards to contracts, the written takes preference over the printed parts and oral agreements take preference only when the written contract is incomplete or ambiguous. Question 2. A lender possessing a chattel mortgage may. A. Assess it. B. Hypothecate it. C. Alienate it. D. All of the above. Answer. D. A chattel mortgage is a mortgage secured by personal property. Such a mortgage may be used as security for an additional loan. When the property is put up as security for a loan and one retains possession, it is said to be hypothecated. Personal property may be assessed for personal property taxes and or federal estate taxes. Question 3. A real estate broker is usually A. A fiduciary to a person interested in buying a property the broker has listed. B. An attorney in fact. C. An agent serving the principal under a duly executed power of attorney. D. None of the above. Answer. D. The broker is usually the agent, fiduciary, of the seller and usually does not have a power of attorney. Question 4. When a broker shows a client's property to a prospective buyer that is listed with the broker under an open listing, the broker should a. Make up an office memorandum b. Confirm the showing to the buyer c. Notify the seller as to the prospect's identity d. Notify the local real estate board answer c. Notifying the seller establishes the broker's right to collect a commission as procuring cause. Notifying the seller as to the prospect's identity provides the only effective way of establishing that right. Question 5. Concerning business opportunities. A. The bulk sales law is contained in the Uniform Commercial Code. B. A bill of sale is used to convey title to business items. C. Sales tax is a tax on the sale of tangible personal property. D. All are true statements. Answer. D. All of these statements are true. Question 6. A licensed real estate broker working under a typical exclusive listing incurs several expenses. He is not entitled to be reimbursed for these expenditures, unless a. The buyer has demanded that these expenses be incurred as a condition of continuing with the transaction. b. Such expenditures were authorized by the principal. c. It was necessary for him to incur the expenses in order to close the sale. 
D. The broker was representing the best interests of the principal in consummating the sale. Answer. B. A seller is not obligated to reimburse the expenses of the broker unless those expenses are authorized by the seller. Question 7. A primary justification for zoning ordinances is to A. Maintain conformity to buildings in the zoned area. B. Prevent an oversupply of certain types of businesses. C. Promote public health, safety, morals and general welfare. D. Control the quality of building construction. Answer. C. Zoning laws are the exercise of police powers which are for the public health, safety, morals and general welfare. No compensation need be paid in exercise of police power as they are for public protection. Question 8. A salesperson receives a deposit together with a written offer to purchase and delivers them to the employing broker who presents it to the seller. The seller signs and accepts the offer. Without the consent of the salesperson and through no fault of his own, the buyer and seller instruct the salesperson's employing broker to return the deposit. Which of the following is true? A. The salesperson's employing broker may retain one half of the deposit and must give one half to the seller. B. The broker may sue the seller but must return the deposit. C. The broker may retain one half of the deposit and must return only one half to the buyer. D. The broker may retain the deposit to compensate him for his efforts. Answer. B. Once the offer has been accepted, the deposit money belongs to the seller. If the seller instructs the broker to return the deposit, the broker must do so. The broker has probably earned a commission and may sue the seller for the amount but may not hold the deposit money. Question 9. An attorney drew up a contract between a buyer and a seller for the purchase of a property. The agreement included a liquidated damages clause calling for the payment of $500 in the event the buyer should default. Prior to the close of escrow, the buyer decided that the home would not suit his family and cancel the purchase. If the seller were to sue for specific performance, he would most likely be a successful because the $500 is not adequate considering the value of the property. b successful because the reason for cancelling by the buyer was not strong. c Unsuccessful because the seller agreed to accept the $500 as liquidated damages in the contract. D. Unsuccessful because an attorney drew up the contract. Answer. C. Since both buyer and seller agreed to the liquidated damages, the seller has agreed that if the buyer defaults, then his sole claim will be to the $500 only. Question 10. A second offer received on a property prior to the seller's decision on the first offer should be A. Evaluated by the broker against the first offer. B. Submitted immediately. C. Held pending a decision on the first offer. D. Turned back to the offeree if it doesn't provide better terms. Answer. B. All offers must be submitted immediately. Question 1. Which of the following factors primarily affects supply in the real estate market? A. Population. B. Demographics. C. Employment. D. Government financial policies. Answer. D. Population. Demographics and employment impact demand for a commodity, but government fiscal, spending and taxing, policies strongly influence availability and cost of credit for those who produce things to be sold, like new homes. Question 2. Of the following, the method which allows the most depreciation to be taken during the first year would be A. Straight line method B. 150% declining balance method 
C. 200% declining balance method. D. Some of the year's digits method. Answer. C. The 200% declining balance method of depreciation allows the most depreciation for the first year. The sum of the year's digits method allows the most depreciation in the earlier years. Question 3. Daniels purchased 60 acres of land near a city. He intended to subdivide it for sale as single-family residential lots and sell the lots for cash. Daniels needs maximum financing to put in streets, curbs, gutters, sidewalks, etc. He wants to pass the cost of these to the lot purchasers in such a way that when title policies are issued to future lot owners, the policies will contain no reference to assessment liens for the above stated purposes. Daniel's best course for financing these needs will probably be A. Real property sales contracts B. Improvement bonds C. Interim loans from institutional lenders D. Corporate stock Answer C. Answer B would result in assessment liens, answers A and D are not specifically financing means for such improvements, by elimination, answer C is the best choice. Question 4. A new well and pump were installed on a parcel of land. For property tax assessment purposes, the county assessor would consider these as A. Improvements B. Additions C. Part of the land D. Personal property. Answer. A. A well and pump would be improvements to the real property. Question 5. Which of the following factors is most likely to influence demand for real estate? A. The number of real estate brokers in the area. B. The number of full time real estate salespersons in the area. C. The wage levels and employment opportunities. D. The price of new homes being built in the area. Answer. C. When wage levels and job expansion are increasing, workers are more likely to buy real estate. When wages are stagnant or declining, they hold back from making big purchasing commitments. Effective demand requires not only the desire to purchase a product, but also the financial means to do so. Question 6. The one unity in a joint tenancy holding that is also present in tenancy and common holding is A. Equal right of possession B. Right of survivorship C. Equal interest of all owners D. Tenant in possession can be charged rent for the use of the land Answer A. Under any type of ownership, each owner has an equal right of possession this means that any owner can go anywhere on the property regardless of the percentage of their overall interest. Question 7. As a part of the purchase price, the seller of a parcel of land accepted a purchase money first trust deed which contained a subordinate clause. This clause would A. Guarantee priority of the first trust deed. B. Preclude the buyer from placing construction loans on the property. C. B. Permit the buyer to place a future loan on the property that would have priority. D. Permit additional liens to be placed against the property without the buyer's consent. Answer. C. A loan in a trust deed that contains a subordination clause supersedes the rule the first to record is the first in right, a subordination clause and note and trust deed is evidence that the lender agrees that a future obtained trust deed may be prior to this loan even though the future loan is recorded later. Oftentimes builders use this clause in a trust deed and note used to purchase raw land from the owner. They offer the owner the full price contingent upon him carrying back financing for the land. The trust deed that he is to receive from the builder must contain a subordination clause in which the owner of the land agrees to be junior in priority to a future recorded construction loan. Question 8. Capitalization is an appraisal process used to A. Convert net income into market value. B. Establish book value. C. Determine net income. D. 
Establish a capitalization rate. Answer. A. Capitalization of income is a method of establishing the value of income type properties. Question 9. The type of legal action that would most likely be taken in the event of a default on a land contract would be A. Lease pendens B. Writ of execution C. Foreclosure by trustee's sale D. Quiet title action Answer D. If the original land contract had been recorded and the buyer has defaulted, there would be a cloud on the title and some form of legal action would be required to clear the title. This would not be a foreclosure but a quiet title action. Question 10. A subordination clause in a trust deed may A. Give priority to liens subsequently recorded against the property. B. Allow for periodic renegotiation and adjustment in the terms of the obligation. C. Prohibit the truster from making an additional loan against the property before the trust deed is paid off. D. Permit the obligation to be paid off ahead of schedule. Answer. A. A subordination clause written into a loan gives a lower, secondary position to that loan if another loan is recorded later. Question 1. Which of the following items could not be used by the owner of a hardware store as security for a loan, under the provisions of the Uniform Commercial Code? A. A personal note endorsed by him. B. Accounts receivable. C. Stock for sale. D. Equipment and fixtures. Answer. C. As the stock will be sold, it cannot be used to secure a loan. Question 2. A valid escrow requires which of the following? A. Escrow instructions with no conditions. B. A binding contract between the buyer and seller and the conditional delivery of transfer instruments to a third party. C. The services of a licensed real estate broker. D. None of the above. Answer. B. A binding contract between the buyer and seller and the conditional delivery of transfer instruments to a third party are required for a valid escrow. Question 3. If the loan to value ratio is low, A. The equity in property is high. B. The equity is not affected. C. The equity in the property is low. D. None of the above. Answer. A. Loan-to-value ratio is the ratio of the loan to the appraised value. If a 90% loan-to-value ratio is given by a lender, that indicates a 10% down payment, and a beginning equity of 10%. If the loan-to-value ratio is only 60%, the down payment is 40% and the beginning equity is 40%. The lower the loan, the higher the equity. Question 4. Sellers are usually reluctant to cancel an existing transferable fire insurance policy in the event of a cash sale, due to the fact that A. A buyer may not properly cover the property. B. The higher short-term cancellation rate will apply. C. It could result in cancellation of other policies. D. The elimination of a cash return in the proration. Answer. B. A seller on a cash sale would be reluctant to cancel an existing transferable fire insurance policy because the seller would receive a short-term cancellation rate. Therefore, the seller would prefer to transfer the existing policy to the buyer. Question 5. A minority purchaser enters your office and states they are looking for, and interested in purchasing, a particular property in a minority neighborhood. You could legally assume that. A. This person is testing you and your legal procedures. B. They are interested in that particular property. C. They are interested in owning a home in an all-minority neighborhood. D. They cannot qualify to own property in a higher-priced area. Answer. V. 
Should any prospective purchaser enter your office requesting to see a particular property, you would assume they were interested in that particular property. Question 6. A subdivider and developer purchased considerable acreage and now plans to construct a tract of 40 homes. In arranging the financing for the new construction, the lender has agreed to advance part of the funds immediately and will release a set amount of additional money as each home is completed. The funds that will be forthcoming as construction progresses are known as A. Obligatory advances B. Reconveyance funds C. Release monies D. Open and mortgage payments Answer A. This type of construction financing is referred to as obligatory advances or fixed disbursement schedule. Question 7. All of the statements below are true, except A. A grant deed may convey after acquired title even when such warranty is not actually written into the contents of the deed. B. A quick claim deed may convey any right or title including fee simple title. C. A deed is of no effect unless delivered. D. A reconveyance deed is used to convey title to a new purchaser in connection with a trust deed sale. Answer. D. A reconveyance deed is given by a trustee to the borrower, known as the truster, after a loan has been paid in full. The borrower records his deed of reconveyance to clear the loan lien from the record. Question 8. Which of the following is not a necessary element in the formation of a contract? A. Offer. B. Acceptance. C. Consideration. D. Performance. Answer. D. Two parties may enter into a contract, but they might not fulfill, also known as perform, their obligations. Question 9. Lenders use the term debt income ratio to refer to a a part of closing costs b loan qualifying tool c requirement of the federal government d formula used in appraising property answer b debt income ratio indicates the fraction that your loan payment on the property is in relation to the net income from the property this is used by lenders when qualifying a person for an income property loan and measuring their margin of safety. Question 10. A prospective client calls you and asks you to take a listing on his property. In reviewing his papers, you discover he is purchasing the property on a contract of sale that has no acceleration clause, and that has no provision in the contract prohibiting a resale or an assignment. Which of the following is the most nearly correct statement? Your client could. A. Sell his interest in the property, but only if he pays off the contract first. B. Sell or assign his rights but not his duties under the original contract unless the contract seller's approval was obtained. C. Properly give the purchaser a warranty deed to the property providing the deed recited subject to the existing contract of sale. D. Properly give the purchaser a grant deed to the property, providing he took back a recorded purchase money second trust deed to cover the payments due on the original contract of sale. Answer B. A party purchasing property under a land contract of sale may sell their interest without difficulty by assigning the contract, provided there is no prohibition on the agreement. The assignee would still be secondarily liable for some of the terms of the contract unless the seller's approval was obtained. Question 1. Land is typically appraised by what approach? A. Income approach. B. Gross rent multiplier approach. C. Option approach. D. Market data approach. Answer. D. Land is typically appraised by the market data approach by comparing the subject property to recent sales data of comparable parcels of land. Question 2. 
If Sarah Jean recently begins to receive her own tax bill after purchasing her property, this means she has most likely purchased into a a condominium b a lease c a tenancy in common d a syndicate answer a a condominium is owned in fee simple just as a normal home would be this means that the homeowner or condo owner receives his or her own property tax bill question 3 which party is most likely to sue for specific performance in regard to the purchase of real estate? A. The buyer. B. The seller. C. The broker. D. The attorney of the brokerage. Answer. A. The party most likely to sue for specific performance would be the buyer. This is done by the buyer to force the seller to sell. Question 4. When are mills most often used? A. In the calculation of square inches. B. In the appraisal of the property. C. In the assessment of the county fire code. D. In the assessment of property taxes. Answer. D. Mills, each one-tenth of a cent, are sometimes used to express the tax rate per dollar of assessed value. Question 5. What is the difference between market value of a property and the debt on the property including all liens? A. Income ratio. B. Assessed value. C. Equity. D. Market fluctuated value. Answer. C. Equity is the difference between the market value and the debt on the property. Question 6. The first step of a jurisdiction attempting to enact eminent domain is to A. Attempt to purchase the property in question. B. Give the owners a 30 day notice to vacate. C. Seek an injunction. D. Obtain a writ of closure. Answer. A. The first step of the jurisdiction would be to attempt to purchase the property at a fair market rate. Question 7. If the buyer, Sue, gives her agent, Jesse, an envelope of cash to hold as her earnest money for the property she wishes to buy, she is trusting that Jesse will protect this money for her and is an example of the fiduciary duty of a. Due process. B. Accounting. C. Competence. D. Escrow. Answer. B. This is the fiduciary duty of accounting. The agent must be able to hold and produce anything that is given to their care. Question 8. If a contract has a clause that states time is of the essence and either party fails to act in a timely manner to execute the contract, they can be held in. A. Breach. B. Default. C. Void. D. Non-performance. Answer. B. If any party fails to take care of their matters in a timely manner in this situation could be held in default of contract. Question 9. In an area neighborhood that has a home in a dilapidated state that would require extensive remodeling to be compared to other homes in the area, what would this be an example of? A. Depreciation. B. Incurable depreciation. C. Curable depreciation. D. None of these. Answer. B. This is an external factor caused by the other homes in the area. This is a form of incurable depreciation. Question 10. The civil penalty for a first violation of the federal fair housing laws can be as much as A. $1,000. B. $5,000. C. 
$10,000. D. $50,000. Answer. D. The court may assess civil penalties against the violator up to $50,000 for a first violation and up to $100,000 for any subsequent violation. Exam Scholar, Real Estate Edition.